Sometimes I think there's something very wrong with me, so take a listen to this patch. Okay, change your underwear and let's get into this patch here. So this one's kind of weird, right, as, you, as we've heard here. So let's kind of dive into this here. So let's go to our effects and let's turn this off here. We're actually using quite a bit. So yeah, we're really using the utility engine for a couple of noise, some extra stuff here. So let's turn that off. We're not using engine two, but we are using analog number one here. So this one is kind of weird because what we're doing is we're starting off with a square wave here and we're doing some FM. So it's a 0 0.02. So we can turn this down. We can see that it is uh, both square square waves. So let's go ahead and undo that, right? So we have square waves and oscillator one and two. They're both down to one octave to really get that low meatiness to it. But the second oscillator is going to be fine-tuned at 0.176. So it has a little bit of difference there. All three are 100% in the mix there. And the third one is going to be a saw wave downwards. And this one is going to be up seven semitones. So kind of creating that perfect fifth there. All of those patches anywhere from perfect. It's actually kind of terrifying. So for the unison here, we're adding a couple of voices. So five to be exact, the detune 2.68 and then full stereo. So without these filters here, because that's really going to be the magic for it. We just get something kind of big and sandy and gross kind of i guess right so for our envelope here this one is actually going to be a linear which i tend to not really do that but for this patch that kind of seemed like it worked out fine so the attack is 1.25 seconds decay 300 milliseconds sustained one and the release at a healthy 2.01 seconds the attack curve is zero but the decay curve is negative four So yeah, that is the thought process for engine number one here. So let's go take a look at the utility engine. So, okay, so this one's weird, right? So the first one is this crowd one because there's a lot of noise and you can kind of hear people talking, maybe laughing. It's very creepy and very weird if you put it in a patch like this. So that's why I did that. Now for the tuning, I put this up to about an octave. I put a little bit more to kind of get it just a little bit weirder, right? And then did the filter at 36% high pass. Go into filter number two and then uh, volume is going to be 13.8 dB. The second noise oscillator is just the analog noise just to kind of get some more texture, more nastiness more noise in there right you always kind of spice it up a little bit more right so this one's going to filter number one and then the volume's 12.6 db and then the third one is really going to act as a sub oscillator obviously right but this is going to be on a macro number two over here so we're going to get into the macros in just a little bit because they're kind of weird right we have time sub horror and effect so yeah so wait for that so this is what this one would sound like So you hear those like distant human voices. It's kind of nice and creepy for something like this. So both of those engines together would sound like this. Now, the point of the crowd one really is to kind of kind of tuck it into the mix where like it's not really a feature of the sound itself. It's more so like a background kind of thing where like you think like, I kind of hear something like that, maybe. But yeah, it's kind of just kind of hidden in there just to kind of give you that psychoacoustic kind of weird vibe. I think I hear something. I think I don't. Right. Where, you know, if you see an ant and you think your whole body is itching, it's kind of like that. Okay, so now this is where the interesting part comes in. So these filters are very strange, right? So we're doing the comb filter for both, right? So the first filter goes the output and then it goes input to the second filter as we can see the routing right over here, right? Filter one feeds into filter number two. So they're both using the comb filter and they're, go they're both going to be on this feedback mode right over here. The gain is kind of really the takeaway, right? So this gain, all these spikes that we see right over here, this is basically going to be on horror, right? So as we turn this all the way down, we can see those are both moving all the way down so we can remove that if we like to, right? So that's kind of the horror macro going on here. So without it, kind of what we heard before, and then with it, it kind of gives us that metallic -y vibe, right? That Metallica vibe, I guess. Especially in the higher notes, it kind of always sounds like something's wrong. 
And that's with no effects. That's just the first engine utility engine going through these filters here. So we're already in kind of a good spot right here. So the real cool part with this type of filter here is the motion of these filters here. So these are both going to be on function number one here, which if we go to function number one, it's just a downward saw wave and this is on Hertz mode, right? And this is a 0 0.010, but keep in mind, this is on a macro, which is time, right? So take a look at this dot here. See how it's slowly moving. It's kind of slowly moving these guys as we increase this here. We're going to see those filters really start to move faster and we can see this dot kind of just move a little bit faster as well. So the play mode here is going to be on one mode. So it plays once on retrigger source. So you kind of want to play a couple notes and do some macro stuff, let go, play a couple notes, do some macro stuff and let go. And this time is really going to help you determine how long to play the note. So if we have it kind of slow here, we can see this little note is going so slow, right? But we can always speed it up. And that's the cool part. We can speed it up while we're playing a note and then drastically slow it down and kind of almost freeze the time a little bit, right? So it's almost going that like, and then we like turn the knob to the left and it kind of just really stays there and kind of hones in on that freezing kind of time thing. And like I said, higher notes are very weird. So yeah, that's kind of how the time works over there. The sub, like I mentioned before, is just this low end sub if you really want some low end in there. To really crank that sub, you know, make the uh, the brown note, as they say. Okay, and then I said the horror is going to be the gain for these comb filters here, and then we have our effects. So let's dive into the effects because this really makes it even more creepy. So let's turn this on here. Let's turn FXB off for now and kind of look at the first bank here. So the thought process of this first is what do you do with the creepy sound? You distort the crap out of it. Now this one, keep in mind, is not on a macro. This is kind of just glued to this sound here. If you don't like it, you can always just disengage this and switch it to whatever you like. Maybe, I don't know, I have no idea what you like. So we have distortion. This is gonna be hard clip. The drive is pretty substantially high, 44.3 dB, so quite a healthy amount. The dry wet, 34%. Just make it nasty, put some hair on it, make it gross, right? The next one, the pitch shifting delay. Let's turn this on here. This one is on the effects, which is macro fours. We can see it at signed over here at 0.33 or 33%. So the concept here is this one is going to be on uh, one over four for the time here. And it just kind of delays and just, and just kind of like detunes as it kind of goes down here. So the spray is going to be 16.6 .6 milliseconds pitch shift down one semitone. That's really all you need for that really creepy detuning. It just sounds like something's wrong. And feedback is gonna be 0 0.318 high pass frequency. We're not really worrying about that. We can, but I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't move this knob here. Low pass, same thing, same deal here. And the stereo detune 49.4 cents and the stereo offset is gonna be zero. So what's great then one delay is another delay. So this one is going to be one over four as well. And then the interesting spot is the time or this fine here is gonna be changed a little bit to the right at 0.149 milliseconds. So do you see how those delays kind of bounce off of each other? It's kind of like they're kind of predictable, but kind of not at the same time. And then the feedback here, 0.352, stereo width 0.7, and we didn't change any of the high pass or the low pass frequency knobs here. And this one's going to be on ping pong, so it's kind of just going back and forth through your headphones. Making it even more creepy. And also on macro number four at 0.30, so a little bit less than the first pitch shifting delay at 0 0.30 or 30%. So now we get into FXB. So this kind of makes it a little bit creepier here. So let's turn this on here. We had a multi-filter, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So we have a shimmer reverb. Now, generally shimmers kind of sound bright and nice and beautiful and angelic and all that. But for this, we're kind of turning that upside down a little bit. So the dry wet is gonna be zero initially, but it's on the macro four at 40%. So the pitch shifting is down one octave and a little bit of change here, right? Change like sense. <laughs> I think it's funny. Negative 12.08 and then the feedback 0.5, size 50%, modulation 1, high pass frequency 200, low pass 7K, ducking 0, stereo width 0 0.750. So take a listen to this. So 
So the thought process is really kind of following the pitch shifting delays lead, right? It's each delay kind of gets pitch shifted downwards and downwards and downwards, so on and so forth. And this is kind of the same concept, but doing that with a reverb, kind of really riding on those, uh, what is it called? The tail coast, the ta riding the tail, riding the tail coats of the delay. I don't know. I think that sounds right. And last but not least is this multi filter right over here. So this one I kind of had on and the cut up all the way to the right. So this is kind of a, a safety net, I guess you can call it because I ran out of macros. It'd be really nice if there was more macros or something like that. But since I had four, I basically put this multi filter in here because we're also using both filters here. So we're kind of running out of room. So this one's kind of here. If there's too much high end, you can always come over here and dial this back a little bit. Or you can modulate that or really do whatever you want with that. But that's kind of here as a just in case, oh, by the way, filter. So yeah, kind of do with it as you please. So this is pretty pretty much this uh, this patch in a nutshell. It's very creepy. It was really fun to make. I don't know why I make things like that. But if you want something like this and you want to have this patch and terrify people in your life, you can do so for free. So there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. But I do highly suggest to make this alongside this video or make it yourself because you're going to really learn how sounds and patches like this are made. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.